This is Larry Pollock from Underground Performance Gym in Ventura, California. Uh, today we're going to do a little reaction uh, video uh, about the high intensity training video that I put out the other day. There was uh, quite a few comments, people asked questions, so I'm going to address some of those comments and questions and, and try to answer them as thoroughly as possible. Okay, so first of all, um, I want to address uh, one topic, which was the uh, title of my video was the evolution evolution of high intensity training. It wasn't Mike Menser's hit training philosophy. Um, I know I did talk about that I did train with Mike Menser and learn from him, but I also you know developed my own theories of high intensity training beyond that. Um, but I also want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the reaction videos and comments that I got regarding Mike and his training uh, because there's a lot of confusion out there uh, about how he actually did it and you know how it actually works and things like this. So first of all, what I told you in the video, the way we trained, um, was exactly what we did do. Uh, which was basically a couple warm-up sets and then we do an all-out set to failure with force reps and negative reps and we do uh, several different exercises per body part depending on the size of the body part so there would be actually one high intensity training set for each exercise so maybe if we're doing say uh, biceps we would do two different exercises maybe three and something like back, we do as many as five different exercises to hit all the different parts of the back. Um, so we're actually doing five total high intensity sets, not one. Now, I initially I trained with Mike in the early 80s, and this is uh, not long after he had retired from competing. So I, I believe you know the way we trained was the way he actually trained when he was trained for competition. I know later in life, um, as he got older, he started promoting uh, different types of uh, philosophies during his training. He came up with theories of uh, people being have so little recuperative ability that they would train a muscle group, uh, a single muscle, like every two weeks, uh, training like only two sessions a month. I've heard you know all kinds of different things. Um, even uh, taking a set and doing it uh, 20 seconds on the uh, concentric and 40 seconds on the eccentric, things like this. So I realized that um, what, what I talked about the way we train is not exactly what he preached later on in life and what other people have claimed that he did and uh, why that changed later I don't know I can only imagine that you know as Mike got older and he was trying to market his principles maybe uh, he was just trying to make a more uh, palatable program for people uh, by saying you know you could train even less time and, and get the same results or better results um, but that's not really what we did uh, first of all someone talked about uh, cadence and the rep tempo okay the the rep tempo that I use and what we did was an explosive uh, eccentric um, where we're contracting the muscle and with as much force as possible so you're lifting a maximal weight for a, a certain amount of reps which is much force as possible and then we lower it under control until we get to the end of the set and then we would do the negatives and obviously on the negatives you're going to go as slow as possible now if you're if you're contracting as fast as possible there's no way you're going to do a 20 second contraction I, I don't even know how that would work we're well, going to take out your phone timer and time it and go one one thousand two one thousand you're not doing anything that's that's not going to work and a 40 second 
negative, that's not real. You can't do that with exerting maximum effort and intensity. I know there's some people out there that claim that they do like, you know, somebody told me they do uh, five reps in a set and the whole and the, the set takes two and a half minutes to do one set. Um, in pr just practical terms, there's no way that you're exerting, you know, maximum effort and lifting as much weight as you can in that exercise and moving that slow. And even if you use a lighter weight, yeah, I don't, it's just not practical to be moving that slow and getting anything out of it. I just don't see it working. So, uh, if you're if you're trying to do this, I, I just don't think it's practical, and I don't think it's going to lead to muscle gains. Uh, I I have yet to see anybody actually do this. Um, I've never seen anybody actually do it in person. If you do, I'd like to see a video of it. So another. Th um, question people asked uh, somebody asked uh, what kind of split do you recommend I do a four-day split it's basically uh, chest and triceps on one day and I group triceps with chest because obviously you're doing a lot of pressing with chest movements and so triceps are very much involved in that um, now for people that are newer I'll do chest shoulders and triceps um, the reason I don't do chest shoulders and triceps myself is just because uh, it's just too much volume for me in one workout and the workout just take too long to do all three of those together. I just found I don't really, I'm not able to do a good shoulder workout if I'm putting it in the middle of chest and triceps. So I do chest and triceps on one workout. I'll do calves and back on another workout. And the reason I do calves, I'll do it at the beginning before back. Um, and the reason I do that is because a lot of people train calves at the end of their workout when they're tired. And obviously, when you're wore out after you train back, you're not going to be, have much energy to put much effort into calves. And I find by doing it before back, I still have plenty of energy to train my back. And I, I'm able to train my calves with maximum intensity. And it doesn't really interfere, interfere with my back workout. So I, I put it, uh, calves and back. Then I do another workout, which is shoulders and biceps. Now, again, newer people, I'll have them do back and biceps. Why don't I do biceps with back? It makes sense that you know you're doing a lot of pulling you're using your biceps why not put biceps with back i just found for myself personally when i train back uh after i've done several exercises i usually will do as many as six or seven exercises for back uh, because there's so many different parts of the back you have your lats your rhomboids your spinal erectors uh, traps all these different parts of your back and in order to hit all the parts of your back, you have to do several different exercises to do it. And at the end of a back workout, I'm so tired that I, I really can't do a good bicep workout. I don't get any intensity, my, I'm just shot. So I'll do shoulders and biceps on a separate workout. And then, my, and then legs is my fourth workout. And when I say legs, that's quads and hamstrings. Now I know some people will do quads and hamstrings, they'll split them up, they'll do a quad workout and a hamstring workout. Um, where one day they're emphasizing their quads, another day they're emphasizing hamstrings. I've tried that too, uh, but I found that, you know, when you're doing something like a heavy squat or heavy leg press, um, you're, you're, you're working your whole leg. So it makes sense to just do it all at one time. So that's the way I do that. Um, other exercise, let me see, move to other questions. Uh, someone said, uh, Dorian Yates took a buck, bucket loads of steroids. Yeah, lots of people took bucket loads of steroids. I'm not saying Yates took bucket loads of steroids. I don't know exactly what he took. But regardless, there's millions and millions of people in the world that took lots of steroids, and they didn't look like Dorian Yates, and they didn't win six Mr. Olympia titles. So obviously, you know, that is not the key, because if it was, we'd all just take steroids and, and be Dorian Yates, and there was only one Dorian Yates. Some other questions I want to get into. Let's see. Uh, I talked about uh, muscle fiber recruitment during different rep ranges. And um, I addressed that saying, you know, we have muscles that recruit in a, a one to three rep range, three to six rep range, and a six to 10 rep range. And somebody said uh, that 
they're recruited on the basis of intensity, not the amount of reps. Well, yeah, of course, but the intensity is based on how hard the weight is when you go to failure. So if you're going to failure with a weight that you can only do three reps with, the intensity is on that level. A one rep max would be the maximum intensity you could put into any, any, in any set of anything. I mean, there's no way you can put more intensity than you would with a one rep max, but obviously we're not gonna train with a one rep max all the time because that's only gonna work your one rep max and you're not gonna be able to work all the different fiber types that way. Other questions, let's see. Talked about that. I'm just uh, flipping through these notes here to uh, answer different questions that people asked. Um, again, yeah, like I said, I, I told you exactly what Mike did during his training and uh, what he preached later in life. And by the way, let me make this point. Later in life, when, and I found this with a, uh, a lot of trainers, you know, um, you'll have people that trained a certain way, dieted a certain way at a certain time in their life when they were competing. And later on in life, 10, 20 years later, they're, they've, they're not competing anymore. They're not even training anymore. And they're still promoting the same things or maybe different things than they did back when. Um, but they're not really in it. So they're just going on what they remember. Um, one thing I can say that sets me apart from some of those people is I never stopped training. I, I just killed my legs the day before yesterday, and they're sore as hell today. So I, I know when I say this is current information. This is not what I did 20 years ago uh, based on my, my memory. This is what I've been doing consistently for 40 years and, and my training has evolved over time. So it has changed. I've made little tweaks here and there in the way I do it uh, to obviously progress and to make my training more efficient. And let's see. Time under tension. We, I addressed that already. I talked about maintenance someone said maintenance shouldn't be a consideration yeah I didn't promote that you know you should train for maintaining and not for progressing obviously you're either progressing or regressing in life in, in anything you do in life I don't care if it's it's working out or financially you're either progressing or regressing very people just stay the same with that being said there are periods in time when some people just maintain where they're at um, whether they're doing it intentionally or unintentionally, it just goes like that. There's sometimes when, you know, I'm trying to make gains, but my body's not making any more gains because I'm maxed out. I've maxed out my genetics and I've done everything I can with my nutrition and training. And I'm not, I'm not growing anymore, but I still have to do the same, uh, training and nutrition just to keep, just to hold on to what I've got, especially at my age. Right now, it's not a matter of like going up above and beyond. It's a matter of like holding on to what, I, what I've got and trying not to lose muscle over time. So there, are, there is going to be a point where, you know, you're not going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger because if that happened, we didn't, you know, have 5,000 pound bodybuilders. And obviously there is a limit with everybody, regardless of your genetics or, or whatever else you do. Someone asked about myo reps. Myo reps is basically a uh, rest pause. Um, it's a rest pause is where you uh, do a set uh, basically to failure uh, for a certain number of reps. Then you'll sit, rest for uh, say 30 seconds, 20 or 30 seconds. And then you'll again, take that same weight and go to failure again wait another 30 seconds and go to failure again. And this is a way to extend the set and increase intensity. And myo reps are basically the same idea, but instead of 20 or 30 second rest, you're maybe taking a five or 10 second rest and then trying to keep going. Um, I've tried rest pause and personally, I don't really care for it. 
I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just, it doesn't work for me because when I set up for training and I gear up to do a heavy lift for a certain amount of reps, I engage the muscle mentally and I take that set as far as I can. Once I put the weight down, I'm exhausted. And my central nervous system is exhausted at that point. So if I try to pick up the weight again in 10 or 15 seconds or even 30 seconds, it's not, it's not going to really, it's not going to work out very well. I've tried it. I just don't, I, I don't feel like it's effective. Um, and also I think it's a way to get injured. Once you exert yourself maximally in a set, like let's say you do a drop set and you like, basically, or even if you just did a set to all out failure, once you set that weight down, you, you your nervous system shuts down right then. Now, for you to try to grab that weight again, I think you're just asking for an injury to happen. Because, it, you know, prior to doing the set, I have to mentally gear up for the set, engage the muscles with the weight and, and what I'm doing and feeling the weight. And again, once the set's over, I'm exhausted. So I'm not going to try to, like, increase the... In, maintain that intensity again in 30 seconds. Uh, I just don't think it's effective and I re I prefer to do a drop set, uh, completely burn out the muscle and then be done with that set and move on. Would high volume uh, build work capacity compared to HIT? Yes. Obviously, if you do more volume, you're gonna have a greater work capacity. If you're a bricklayer and you lay bricks and you do it for eight hours every single day, you're gonna develop endurance to be able to work eight hours a day laying thousands of bricks. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a buff construction worker that didn't lift weights? Not really. So will you build endurance? Yes, you'll build endurance. Are you gonna build more muscle? No. If you wanna build endurance because you're trying to be an endurance athlete, do more volume. But if you're trying to build as much muscle as you can, the intensity is what matters, not the volume. So those are some questions that I had. And uh, obviously, if you have more questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions. But I, I covered it pretty thoroughly in the first video. Um, I, I told you exactly what we did, why we did it. I know there's other videos out there, like I said, where you know people are claiming different ideas of high intensity training and, and how it works. This is just what I found is most effective based on training myself and also training lots of other people. Um, if you have a better way, you you know, I, I recommend that you try everything. I can tell you personally, I have probably tried every type of training methodology there is. High intensity, high volume, um, higher reps, lower reps. I've, I've done every single thing just to see, you know, what would work. And I found that basically high intensity training uh, is the most effective thing, at least for myself, for building muscle. And I found that most effective with my clients as well. So uh, that should wrap that up. And uh, again, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. So this is Larry Pollock from Underground Performance Gym, Ventura, California, with a hardcore training center in Ventura. You can go on our website, get a free seven day pass. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video so we can keep bringing you more content in the future.